The demand for fingerlings mm -hmm. in the country as of now is standing to almost 100 million annually. 100 million, 100 million fingerlings. And, and there are only 108 oh. uh, hatcheries that are producing maybe up to about 6 million. Mm -hmm. So we still have a deficit of like 90%. Oh. The small lavish. Uh, yeah, I don't know if you can see it. Yes, I see them very yeah, well. Yeah. Then here we have the dry one. Mm. Uh, when we dry it using sun drying, mm. uh, so slowly we'll graduate to use uh, some good uh, drying mechanisms. Okay. Then uh, here we have the manure. Ah, the manure. Yeah, the manure from the, the frass, process from of the, the, the yeah. of the waste. Yes. So now this is the manure. The manure which you use it for vegetable farming. Oh. Good morning, Mr. Frederick. Morning. How are you? I'm thank doing well, thank you. I'm really amazed to see all the things you have here. Could you introduce yourself and tell us from where you got the idea to set a fish farm uh, along the uh, uh, Lake Victoria uh, borders like this? Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Frederick Juma. Uh, I'm a fish farmer and I'm an entrepreneur in agriculture. Uh, we started off Hydro Victoria Fish Farm located here at Port Victoria, Busia County, along mm. the shores of Lake Victoria in Kenya. And uh, we started off initially with the cage fish farming. Uh, these communities along this area were mainly indigenous fishing communities in the Lake Victoria. But over time we realized the capture fisheries, the volumes were going down, down, to the extent now even the households along the lake are not able to get fish for a meal. Mm. So we tried out now from fishing, we tried to think of aquaculture. Okay. And uh, from there we, thought we heard about this cage culture, cage mm -hmm. fish farming culture, mm -hmm. where you put cages in the water, you stock fingerlings and you feed up to maturity. Okay. So in the process, uh, we started off around 2017, 2018, mm -hmm. uh, as pilot with one, two cages. So later on we increased the cages to about 10. And we realized that the, the, as we continue with cage farming, we harvest the fish after seven to eight months, mm -hmm. uh, mainly tilapia species. We tried out also catfish, and mm -hmm. we realized the catfish, because of the numbers, they eat each other and they, they, you get less numbers. Mm -hmm. So we, we stick to, to tilapia farming, and uh, we realized that uh, the demand for fingerling was like the, one of the hindrances, okay. apart from feed. Okay. So once you have the cage, you need feed and you need fingerling. Okay. So we looked around for hatcheries mm -hmm. and we realized that there are only two government hatcheries serving around five counties in mm -hmm. the western Kenya near mm -hmm. the lake. Mm -hmm. And the volumes and quantities was very little to be able to sustain the cage culture. So we developed interest and we saw that uh, to be able to proceed, we needed more investment into fish fingerling hatcheries and also the feed. Mm -hmm. And uh, we started off our first hatchery in 2018-2019. Uh, later on, we moved on. We had around, we started with five ponds. Mm -hmm. So five ponds with about 200 brooders mm -hmm. of fish, the male and female. So we kept on increasing the number. Now we have about uh, 3,000 brooders. We have about uh, six ponds, mm -hmm. not on this side and even other sites along the rivers within the area. Mm -hmm. And uh, we invested in the hatchery. And now we're also looking at the feed element. Okay. And the demand for fingerlings mm -hmm. in the country as of now is standing to almost 100 million annually. 100 million, 100 million fingerlings. And, and there are only 108 mm. uh, hatcheries that are producing maybe up to about 6 million. Mm -hmm. So we still have a deficit of like 90%. Mm -hmm. So we encourage now more farmers to be able to get into uh, investors to come into fish hatching mm -hmm. and uh, also bring in other farmers like now women in nursing mm -hmm. so that the hatcheries only focus on production of fingerling mm -hmm. then the women can do the nursing okay yeah are these uh, brood stock mm. what do you have here yeah these are the brood stock for tilapia okay. they are about uh, 200 uh, uh, combined male female okay uh, in the ratio of one to three for, so okay. we pair them for so about, they are breeding here they are breeding inside here okay and this brood stock come from where this broodstock, uh, we got it from the government uh, research station, Kenya Marine and Fisheries, in Sagana. Oh, in Sagana. Yeah. So these are the improved strain, the local improved strain. strain. The local improved strain, okay. gener F, F generation 8. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Of nine tilapia. Nine tilapia. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And from here, uh, when you collect the eggs, where do you incubate them? So once we collect the, the, the eggs here, mm -hmm. we have a hatching system there, okay. which we use uh, solar power to run it. Okay. Then we collect the eggs from, mm -hmm. the, from the mouth, 
mm-hmm. or some of them we get them the hatchlings like the one day old okay. we go and nurse them okay we put them uh, start feeding them the, the after like the third second day okay. we start fe- feeding them the sexual reversal hormone okay. with feeds mm-hmm. and then we are able to produce the male female Okay. Can we see male only. some of the fingerlings? I know you yes. showed us a tank there yes. with fingerlings, yes. a pond. Yes, we can see. In this pond, we have 260,000 fingerlings stocked for nursing. Uh-huh. Uh, they are an average of 0.3 grams, and we want to grow them to 1.52 grams before you can offload it to the farmers. Okay. Yeah. And, the, and the Lake Victoria is just uh, behind you there? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Inside here we have about uh, 300 cages mm-hmm. in the water mm-hmm. uh, and already the background you are seeing mm-hmm. is about uh, one and a half kilometer to the Ugandan border of the lake. Kenya only has 6% of this share of the lake. Okay. So the best you can do in terms of fish production is, is uh, cage fish farming. Mm-hmm. So this area has been zoned to be the most suitable uh, site for cage fish farming because has a depth of water beyond 10 meters mm-hmm. and it also has uh, less uh, waves and the weed, the, the, weed, the hills that you can see in the background are the ones that will help to break the waves. Nice. So it's a suitable site for cage culture. Thank you. And you also said you produce BSF? Yes, uh, we, we, uh, we produce BSF on the farm. Okay. The okay. From the chicken droppings, pig manure and also the vegetables. Can we have a look on that? Yes, we can have a look. Thank you. Thank you. So this is your BSF facility. Yes, this Black is Black soldier fly uh, larvae production. This is our BSF facility mm-hmm. where we have the hatching section for the adult flies. Uh, the adult fly one has potential to give us about 900 eggs per day mm. in the production cycle. And here the adults we are putting attractants, mm-hmm. some pungent smell to make it be able to hatch the eggs. Mm-hmm. We have we used the wooden sticks inside there. Mm-hmm. That's what we use to be able to with the rubber bands so that now with the crates and they also at adult stage they only drink water mm-hmm. uh, sometimes when it's dry we add in a little bit of sugar to give them more energy so okay. that in a span of five to ten days they will have laid for us the eggs okay. now we, we continue with the same cycle of egg lava pupa adult okay. and where, yeah. where are they so you collect the eggs from this uh, wooden we collect uh, the eggs from this wooden uh, structure okay then we use uh, we use the eggs to to take it to the crates. Okay. We use the chicken feeds as uh, the nursery, the one for feeding. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then? The, like the eggs. So if we, once we collect the eggs from there, mm-hmm. we come and put them in the crates. Mm-hmm. And the crates here, we use different levels of uh, feed. Mm-hmm. Like here now, we, we have some PSF that are about uh, 12 days old. Okay. Uh, here they do another two, three more days. Okay. Then we are able to harvest. Okay. Yeah. So here we have the like the the small lavies. Uh, yeah, I don't know if you can see it. Yes, I see them very yeah, well. Yeah. Then here we have the dry one. Mm. When we are dry to using sun drying. Mm. Yeah, so slowly we'll graduate to use uh, some good uh, drying mechanisms. Okay. Then uh, here we have the manure. Ah, the manure. Yeah, the manure from the, the process, from of, the process. The, of the of yeah. the waste. Yes. So now this is the manure. The manure, which you use it for vegetable farming. Oh, okay. And organic vegetable you feed using this manure. Mm-hmm. We have realized that you don't even even need to use oil. Little oil mm-hmm. you save on the oil, and this vegetable is sweet and soft. Nice, yeah. nice, nice, yeah. nice. Yeah. So it becomes a circular, circular economy. economy. Okay. So we we buy feeds for chicken mm-hmm. initially, or the pig, mm-hmm. or the fish. Mm-hmm. Then the waste from those streams, we bring it feed the black soldier, and the black soldier feeds back the the, the chicken, feeds back the pig, and feeds back the, the fish. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So we don't have any waste. If fish dies on the farm, mm-hmm. we collect it and put in the black soldier crate. Mm-hmm. After 24 hours, we collect the bones. And we recover all the nutrients. Wonderful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> OK. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So this is the farm model. Which you used to Your train. farm model, yeah, farm the way model. you have designed the farm. Designed yeah. the farm, mm-hmm. used to train the farmers. Mm-hmm. So uh, initially, I mentioned that we started with cage culture. Mm-hmm. Then we realized we need fingerlings. Mm-hmm. So we set up the hatchery. Okay. And, uh, 
around 2020, when COVID came, we realized that uh, farmers were not buying the fish, the fingerlings at our hatchery, mm -hmm. because the feed availability and quality was, was becoming an issue. Mm -hmm. So we thought of introducing the black soldier. Mm -hmm. But the black soldier fly farming on the farm, we realized it also needs waste. Mm -hmm. So we brought in other value chains, the pig mm -hmm. and the poultry. So because we thought the waste from the pig can mm -hmm. be fed on a black soldier and also from the pig and the poultry, then the nutrients we recover here mm -hmm. can be able to feed all the value chains, including the fish. Mm -hmm. And now we have contracted farmers because we tried doing it on the farm, so we really need a lot of volumes of waste. Huh? Mm -hmm. So we have contracted farmers, about 130 farmers, to be able now, here is an expanded model of this, the black soldier fly farming, we have farmer A, farmer B, C, in two sub-counties, and each farmer will supply them with the five day old eggs of the black soldier. Uh, we train them, we ask them to innovate on the threats. Those who can buy threats, we can buy for them in bulk and give them. Mm -hmm. Then we also be able to give them the, the, the 10 day old chick or one month old chick mm -hmm. also of uh, chicken and also piglets which we have on the farm. Mm -hmm. Now the farmers are able now to produce more BSF. Mm -hmm. And the waste they collect from the pig or the chicken, they also feed the BSF. And for the BSF they produce, an average farmer is producing about 10 kilos. And uh, out of this, we ask them to sell to us like uh, 70%. Mm -hmm. Then the third percent they feed the chicken on the farm. Then they bring it to us, we do value addition, we make some feeds from it, formulate local feeds. Mm -hmm. Then we now give back to the farmer mm -hmm. to continue to improve because now we have added maize bran, rice bran. We continue improving the livestock we have on the farm. Mm -hmm. So that's the model we have, and we do have signed contracts with these farmers so that continuously they know once they produce the BSF, there's a ready market mm -hmm. which can buy from them, and they also get the training and they get the technical support. Nice. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So thank you very much. Uh, uh, here at Hyde Victoria, from the experience we have learned over the time, we need more players to come on board as hatchery operators privatized to be able to do business with the farmers and we also need uh, more women and youths coming on board to do hatching uh, i mean nursing of fish so that the hatcheries only stick with hatching then they, they sell the fries to the women to do the nursing and we have more fingerlings being produced uh, on the element of feed we need uh, more stakeholders to come on board to support the value chain on the feed because feed and the fingerling are the main constraints in aquaculture and uh, we need to embrace the black soldier fly farming with the farmers to be able to be able to reduce the cost of production for the feed, especially if you do the circular economy model mm -hmm. and you're able to contract more farmers in their households to produce the BSF mm -hmm. and have it more volumes come out to be able to support the aquaculture because it's at a nascent stage and but we look ahead we see there's huge demand for fish on the table. And for this to be sustained, we need capacity building, we need to collaborate with the researchers in terms of innovation, we need to be able to uh, tackle the feed challenge and also the fingerling challenge to be able to increase the production, especially in Africa where we have a population growing at a fast rate and also the, we also have the young people taking over like 60% of the population and they have the energy to get into this sector and move forward. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Frederick. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, by the way, how many staff do you have here? We have 10 staff okay. on the farm. We have three sites. This okay. is just one of them. Okay. There are other two sites out there. So here we have about seven, then three are, uh, are at the different sites. Uh, and we have about uh, four women mm -hmm. and uh, six, six men in, the, in our group. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, how do you say goodbye in Swahili? Asante sana. <laughs> say it again. Okay, asante sana. Correct. <laughs>